Hi, and welcome to lecture two, how to acquire and spend Bitcoins. In this lecture, we're gonna discuss the following. First, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the Bitcoin wallet. The Bitcoin wallet is the thing that you use to store Bitcoins and send Bitcoins to uh, other people. Uh, then we're gonna discuss how to actually put Bitcoins into your wallet. Then we're gonna talk about moving Bitcoins between wallets. And then finally, we're gonna wrap up with some security advice to make sure that your Bitcoins are safe and secure. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin with the Bitcoin wallet from a general overview. The way Bitcoins work and the way that you acquire Bitcoins is that we have this thing called a public key. Bitcoins are cryptographically signed using this magic thing called elliptic curve DSA. And that produces two pieces of information, a public key and a private key. So the public key, just like its name, is known by everybody. For currently, we know every single public key in the entire Bitcoin network. It allows us to find where all the coins are, the addresses you can send coins to. So if you wish to send money to somebody, Bitcoins to somebody, you're going to need to know their public key. That's the Bitcoin wallet address. Now, if you want to send the coins, your coins, to a particular person or have them send coins to you, one needs what's called a private key. So there's a public key, which is known to everybody, and a private key, which is only known to the person who owns the Bitcoins within the Bitcoin wallet. And this is how the system is kept secure. Basically, the private key is like a special key that only you have that's associated with your Bitcoin wallet. And when you use that private key, it gives you the ability to transfer money from that wallet to any public key in the entire network, i.e. anybody who has a Bitcoin wallet. So for the public key, as I said before, everybody knows that. And the address for your wallet is basically derived from this public key that's generated from elliptic curve cryptography. For example, one of my Bitcoin wallets is right here. This address right here, this long, nasty string of stuff actually is me. So if you have some Bitcoins and you want to send them to me, you can go ahead and send it to this address right here and I'll actually receive them. And I'm okay with giving the world this public key address because it in no way impacts the security of my wallet. However, I have a private key that only I know. It's built into my wallet. In fact, I, I don't even know it. My, my wallet on my computer knows it, and the cloud wallet that I use know my private key, but um, uh, only they know it. And as a result, I can access the funds, send funds to people, and I'm completely secure and safe because no one else knows this private key. So to recap, what a Bitcoin wallet is, is it's a bucket to contain all of your Bitcoins when it has a public address, that mine has this public key here. And when someone wishes to send you Bitcoin money, they have to know the public address to send you money. Think of it like uh, a bank account number. Basically to send money to a bank account, somebody has to have your bank account number. To withdraw money from a bank account more often than not, somebody has to have some sort of authenticating information. And that's kind of like the private key. So the private key is a proof that you are indeed the owner of this wallet, allows you to open the wallet and send stuff from that wallet to uh, other wallets. That's basically how a Bitcoin wallet works. And it's backed by elliptic curve uh, digital signing algorithms, which are so powerful that the NSA, a very, very secretive uh, organization the US government maintains to hack into other countries' uh, computers actually uses DSA in its Suite B protocols and perhaps even the Suite A protocols, which are classified. So it's a very, very secure way of both storing and sending money. So there's a bunch of different types of Bitcoin wallets. So the first type of Bitcoin wallet is a desktop wallet. So this is basically something that you download and install upon your computer. And there are three Bitcoin wallets that I'd highly recommend. Bitcoin QT, Electrum, and Armory. And they all do different things. For, the, for this lecture, I'm just gonna talk about Bitcoin QT because this is the most common wallet used. And it's the, also the easiest one to configure and use. Over time, Electrum may become easier. And Armory is really meant for uh, computer geeks who like messing with things. So I'm gonna show you my Bitcoin wallet. This right here is my Bitcoin wallet. It's called Bitcoin QT, and I'm later going to show you where you can download and how to install this wallet. Okay, so Bitcoin QT gives me an overview of how much money I have, and it says right here, balance 
0.01 BTC. BTC stands for Bitcoin, and it tells you how many transactions have gone to this wallet. Now, this is a new wallet I created for the purposes of this lecture, so there's not a lot of money in it, and we're going to actually transfer money from this to a different wallet later on, and I'm going to show you how that process works. It's pretty idiot-proof. You have send coins and receive coins, and then also I have a transaction ledger. So this right here is the only transaction in the, this wallet's history, and you can see it doesn't know who sent it, and this is where the coins went from. And I have some sort of transaction ID associated with it. You can ignore all of that. The important thing is to look at how much do they send me. Confirmations, this is an important concept. Okay, so every single Bitcoin transaction since the beginning of Bitcoins is actually known by the entire Bitcoin network. This is part of the process of how Bitcoins are secure and how we prevent double spending. Confirmations merely mean how many times this transaction has been vetted by the big cloud of supercomputers all working together to make sure that Bitcoin is safe and secure. So this transaction has been confirmed 57 times. About every 10 minutes, a transaction gets confirmed. Statistically speaking, after six confirmations, a transaction is basically set in stone, meaning that there is no way that this could have been an illegitimate transaction. There's no problems with this transaction. Even one confirmation, statistically speaking, is pretty good, but six is one in, in I think, 150 billion. It's a very, very, very small probability that there's a problem with this transaction, much more reliable than, let's say, a MasterCard transaction or a cash transaction. So, this is a desktop client. All right, there's another type of client, the cell phone. The only one I'd really recommend right now that's not cloud-based is Bitcoin Wallet. I think it's made by the same organization that makes Bitcoin QT, and it works for both BlackBerry and Android. I don't know if they have an iOS application quite yet. Bitcoin Wallet is kind of cool because if you download it, it's now tethered to your phone, and now you can actually use your phone as a payment processing and receiving service uh, with Bitcoins and that's something that you can check out. It's in the um, Android marketplace if you're curious. And then of course there are some cloud-based solutions. So basically what a cloud-based solution is, it's in the internet. It lives in the internet. It's kind of like Gmail or Dropbox or uh, Carbonite. Any of these services where you create an account and now you have access to something. And there are three in particular that I really, really like. Blockchain, BIPs, and Coinbase. And uh, the one I use myself is Blockchain. And this is my blockchain account. I'm going to open up my wallet. So this is one of my wallets that I have with blockchain. And you'll see that it has 0.155 Bitcoins in it. And the market value of these Bitcoins as of today, April 16th, 2003, is $11.51. To give you an idea how much Bitcoins have appreciated, this same amount right here would have been worth just a little over $2 less than a year ago. So Bitcoins have increased in value tremendously. But um, anyway, back to the wallets. This is blockchain. So to actually create a wallet, what one would do, click on home, excuse me, click on wallet, click in log, uh, start a new wallet. You would put an alias in, you'd enter a password in the CAPTCHA, and then after you've done that, you'll uh, be able to log in. So the identifier is actually your wallet ID, and they're going to email this to you, uh, and I'd recommend writing it down or saving it as a text file. So just in some way keep it, because if you lose this, you will not be able to access your wallet. The reason why I use blockchain is they actually encrypt the wallet so they don't have access to it. And so when I enter my password, I can see my wallet. But if I actually choose to send money, which I'll do later in this lecture, I have to enter another password, which makes this wallet incredibly secure. Um, OK, so this is a cloud-based wallet. And there's a couple of others. One of them is Coinbase, uh, and the other one is BIPs. And both of these guys allow you to go ahead and store your money online, access it anywhere in the world, and transfer money to any other person who has a Bitcoin wallet, whether it be something that's installed on a particular computer on their desktop or something online. Um, one thing I will mention about all Bitcoin wallets is wallets have to sync because every transaction in the entire Bitcoin history is known. They have to sync with the Bitcoin network and they have to download and verify all of these transactions. If you've just installed this, the syncing can take a little while, about an hour to two hours if it's a desktop client. This is why a lot of people like using a um, 
cloud-based solution because it's already been synced on the server. But once this has been installed, the syncing is just a, a few seconds, sometimes a couple of minutes, if you've left your computer off for a while and the wallet hasn't been on. Um, so that's, uh, that's basically how one installs a wallet. Um, the place you go to get Bitcoin wallets, oops, just a moment. The place you go to get Bitcoin wallets is this website right here, bitcoin.org, choose your wallet. So we're going to go ahead and open that up. Bitcoin.org is, if there ever was an official site for this decentralized currency, it is Bitcoin.org. And uh, there's a lot of wonderful resources on this website about the Bitcoin, but they have an entire set of resources specifically about the wallet. And if you find it from Google, you just um, you get to the front page here and just click on choose your wallet. And this right here is the wallet network. So the software wallets are what I call the desktop wallets. You can download them and install them on your computer. They mention uh, Bitcoin wallet as an Android application. Blockchain is another one that's, uh, blockchain is the website, but you also have an Android and an iOS app that you can access your um, cloud-based wallet from your cell phone if you so desire using blockchain.info. Uh, and Petuna is also another one. And these are all recommended. They've been vetted. People believe in them. And the vast majority of the money in the Bitcoin economy is stored in one of these mechanisms. So that's how you get a wallet. They're all free. They're going to be free forever. The money is not in charging you to use the money. So just like PayPal, these guys are free. All right. So that's basically how you get a wallet. And recap, a wallet is just basically a bucket where all your money, your Bitcoins, live. You put them in there. It has a public key, which is the address of your wallet, and a private key, which is the key you use to be able to access and go ahead and send money from your wallet. Okay, so a natural question you're gonna ask me is, well, Charles, that's great. You've taught me about these wallets, but how do I actually get Bitcoin money? Well, remember something, Bitcoins are money. So it would be kind of like going to Marshalls or to Payless or something and buying a wallet. And then you come to me and say, well, how do I fill this wallet? And I say, you have to work. You have to do something. You have to uh, buy something, right? You have to exchange some sort of existing money for the, uh, the currency you want to get into. Bitcoin, as it being money, you don't get it for free or else it would be some sort of bizarre scam. So there's a couple of ways to acquire Bitcoins. Option A is you buy them and you buy them through an exchange like Mt. Gox. Mt. Gox was engineered from the ground up to be uh, just like any other currency exchange. And right now, Mt. Gox is selling Bitcoins for $75. Well, the people on Mt. Gox are selling Bitcoins for $75.23. And this is an exchange, so the price changes day to day. Sometimes it goes very high. I've seen it as high as $266. When I purchased Bitcoins, they were in the single digits. And then even before that, they were even lower, like 10 cents a Bitcoin. So they've appreciated in value considerably over the past four years. So one option is to go ahead and um, go to an exchange and purchase them off of the exchange from some other person who has Bitcoins, as you would purchase uh, the, the renminbi or um, the yuan, or the yen, excuse me, or the Australian dollar. Buy them just like you would any other currency. There are some websites like Coinbase and BIPs who allow you to purchase web, uh, Bitcoins at market price from them uh, and have it directly deposited into your Bitcoin account. And I'll show you uh, Coinbase. So this is Coinbase and they give you an option to go ahead and purchase the Bitcoins. BIPs also allows you to do this. Um, Blockchain has options to purchase Bitcoins as well. And I'll encourage you to go to these websites and take a look at them. All of them are very legitimate. It's a little bit of a handling fee, but the price is so volatile that usually if you purchase them, you'll probably make a profit within a few days if you chose to sell them. Another option you have is to actually purchase physical Bitcoins. Now, throughout this entire lecture and all the lectures, we've been talking about Bitcoins only living online, but uh, this company called Cassius decided to actually mint Bitcoins. And how they did it, and I have an example here on eBay, is that they got a coin and they put a holographic sticker on this coin and they give people who look at the coin the public key address. It's, it's on the coin so you can verify that this is legitimately a 
a real Bitcoin, and they have a hologram that if you tear off the hologram, the private key is underneath it. So this is actually a big